Hi, I use Lucidchart to create uh, process flow diagrams or PFDs and also the much more detailed PNIDs or piping and instrument diagrams. And one of the things that are on these drawings is there's always a list of very detailed equipment information, typically on the top or maybe for pumps it's on the bottom of the drawing. And all of the lines on a PNID have a lot of detailed information for that line. So it will have what the fluid is, what the piping spec is, a line size, a line number, insulation, and maybe a few other things. And so the question is, how do we get Lucidchart to take that information that is in a database or a spreadsheet and put it into the drawing automatically? So that's what I'll show you right now, today. Okay, so here's a simple diagram for a distillation tower. Now this is the level of a PFD, but we'll put some of the PNID, de uh, PNID details on it. We're going to start with the equipment list. Now typically the list of equipment will be at the top or maybe the bottom if it's pumps, and it will contain the equipment tag number, the equipment name, and some useful information for the pump or for the equipment. Now, my equipment details are in a spreadsheet. The sheet is called MEL. This is the mechanical equipment list, and I've got a bunch of information uh, for all this equipment. So if it's the distillation column, it's got a tag, it's got a name. And for this uh, PNID, I've got some descriptor for it that I will have on the drawing. So the question is, how do I get this data on this spreadsheet into this drawing? Okay, the tool that we're going to use is called a smart table. But before we use a smart table, we need to pull in some data. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the little data icon that's off on the left-hand side. We'll press that. We'll press it again. We'll say link data import my data. I'm using an Excel spreadsheet. Choose my file. And this is the mechanical equipment list right here. So I will bring that in. And it thinks a bit. Okay, so I want to bring in mechanical equipment list. And it brings in that table. We'll tell it that the first row is the header. And we will say that column B is the key. This is the complete tag. Hopefully we have unique uh, tag names or unique tags for equipment. So I'm going to use complete tag for that. And I'll say finish. Okay. So now it's got the data. And all the data is over here somewhere. Now how do we create a table? Well, it's called a smart table. So I have to find it. So I'll just look for smart table. And right here, drag and plop. And there we get a blank table. Off on the right hand side, under this contextual panel, it says, oh, data set. Select a data set. I want to pick mechanical equipment list. Oh my goodness, it gave me everything that I could imagine. Well, I don't quite want that. The first thing I want to do is I want to put it sideways. Okay, well that's better, but it's got a bunch of equipment that I don't care about in my mechanical equipment list. So I need some filters. The first thing I'm going to filter is I'll say add a new filter, and I'm only going to show if I've got some, some, one of the columns is in PFD, so I'll say show if in PFD contains 303, and voila. Now I've only got the data in my mechanical equipment list that has the field for the drawing number 303, so now I've got just that data. Hmm, not showing the right stuff. Well, I have to go over here to manage fields. I've got the complete tag. Well, that's in the wrong order. That needs to be up here. Tag name. Yeah, 
check tag name. No, I don't want that one. I want, oh, let's say PNID descriptor, because that might be the information I want to show. Undo that. There. And there is a pretty nice equipment table. And we can do some more formatting to remove the lines. We can have some stuff on the top, some on the bottom of the page, but that in general is how we do it. So now if anything changes on our mechanical equipment list, we just have to re-import that spreadsheet or database and it will automatically update all of the drawings that are attached to that data. So that's really useful. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to work with a line number. And for this, we look at a line designation table. And our line designation table probably looks something like this. And I've got all of my other lines hidden, so we only need to look at one. So this is line number 3511. It's in the distillation area. Tons of information about this particular line. We've got materials of construction, design conditions, insulation, and at the very, very end of the day, we have a complete line number. And I want to put that complete line number on the drawing. So let's see how we do it. Well, the first thing we're going to do is we need to get some more data. So we're going to say, add a new data set. And we will import our data. And we will say it is Excel. And lo and behold, here's our line designation table right here. And I will bring in LDT data. The first row is the header. The first column in this is the key. That is just the bare line number without all the other bits and goodies and details. And we'll say that's good enough. Okay. So let's get the line for this line, the line number for that one right there. And I just happen to know that is line number 3511. So how do I do this? Well, we hit the contextual panel. First it has layout. That's not very interesting. We want data. Okay. Select, add a new data field. Well, so now we go over to our line designation table data. We're going to scroll down until we get it. It's right here. We're going to grab this entire line. We're going to drag and plop it. Drag and plop this particular line over here. So I'm going to drag it, plop it over. It lights up, plop it down. So that means this particular line is going to work with some data that's on, that has the key 3511 in LDT data. But what do we want to show? Here's how we do it. Double click. I'll zoom in a bit so we can see. Not quite that much. Double click the line so we get a text box. Now we go over to our LDT data. Here's all the fields that we could possibly have. We want the very last one. Full line number. And right here, it's got a T with a little plus sign right there. That's the one we want because that adds this piece of text. And there it is. So now if something changes on our database, someone changes some information on a line list, perhaps a different line size or different insulation class. We re-import the database and it updates all of our line numbers. And we can do that exact same trick with a bunch of other symbols within our PNID, such as we could have instrumentation. We can attach instrumentation, or we can attach this particular instrumentation to some data, and we can tell it to fill in something in the top of this uh, instrument tag, 
and we can fill in something in the bottom of this instrument tag. This might be the, the, the prefix like FIT, and the bottom might be the actual tag number. So it's in the top FIT, and in the bottom, one, two, three, four. Okay, so that, everyone, is how we can use, how we can connect Lucidchart to a data source and update things like a mechanical equipment list or the equipment list at the top of the drawing, and we can create or, or have line numbers on our lines. Thanks very much. Have a good day. Bye-bye.